डर फेस्बुक प्यूर् यूरालजी व्यूअर्स गुड ईविनी वन अंड आईक् एव्री डे वी आर् डिस्कसिंग दि सर्जिकल टेक्निक वीडियो टूडे वी आर् डिस्कसिंग रेट्रोपेरिटोनोस्कोपिक अड्रन लेक्टमी टू बी आनेस्ट अड्रन लेक्टमी इज वन अगेन anatomical surgery more uh, complicated because it is close to on either side major vessels left or right and uh, it is purely retroperitoneal organ uh, hidden under the subcostal region you have to uh, see retract the liver and spleen uh, in case of transperitoneal but in retroperitoneoscopy it is direct on to the renal artery and above that adrenal and an adrenal vein arteries can be seen from behind uh, in fact without seeing much and meddling with the major vessels you can remove the adrenal gland but the problem with retroperitoneoscopy it is not practiced by many people very few practice uh, across the world either uh, uh, laparoscopic or robotic technology either ways it is difficult because it is like supine pcnl where you have limited space and uh, the working ports are not uh, like in laparoscopy where triangulation will not work out you need orientation or uh, too many ports cannot be put or uh, too much fogging can obstruct the vision and these are the difficulties in this surgery so today our speaker is dr ginil kumar most of the Uh, urologists who are interested in oncology might be knowing him uh, along with his friends he they formed a good uh, academic group regularly conducting uro oncology all uh, subjects related to the uro oncology uh, good evening sir dr ginil sir good evening uh, chandramohan yeah. yeah yeah so i uh, I, i am very happy that uh, before we know each other we became friends uh, during one conference and enjoyed the i always remember that conference meeting yeah we really discussed the practical points and uh, then we became friends uh, the you, regarding your career you did your mbbs from where sir uh, the, my entire study was from calicut medical college i finished it, uh, finished uh, uh, my mbbs in 95 ms and mc by 2002 I finished my MCH and joined Amrita Institute of Medical Science. Okay. And uh, in 2000, after 2004, I focused on the uro oncology, and uh, finally, uh, we could establish a good uro oncology unit in Amrita. So, and we later we got the robot also in the institution. Yeah. So uh, that is the story. Yeah. So, uh, you, you, your MCH, who was your uh, mentor? Calling my MCH, yeah. In MCH, uh, I uh, was under uh, Dr. Suleiman, Dr. Uh, Felix Cardoza, and Dr. Roy Chali was uh, our uh, mentor, like a godfather in our hospital. And uh, so after that, uh, we I joined Amrita. So Dr. Sanjay Bhatt was the initial uh, mentor, and later I could uh, have Dr. Sudhir Raval, who along with uh, Dr. Manohar and uh, Murugesh Manohar, and I could. Established in your oncology, so these are the two mentors in your oncology part. So even when you were in MCH, uh, uh, you were trained in all aspects of urology. During MCH, I uh, was a regular. But thing is, uh, my I will say my laparoscopic training happened because laparoscopy came later. Uh, it got established after two thousand. So my laparoscopic training was mainly from Amrita, and uh, I ha- I am very much indebted to Dr. Sanjay Pat who. introduced the retroperitoneoscopy in the hospital way back in 2003 2004 and our initial presentation which was well uh, accepted in the national level so in we fact, started uh, long back sanjay bhat sir is a well known uh, live uh, operative surgery yeah. uh, retroperitoneal laparoscopy is very ground to yeah, yes. uh, person and i think he is in dubai now yeah dubai and uh, i am very much indebted to him for uh, just introducing me to laparoscopy and mini He is Dr. H S Bhatt's son, na? Yes. Great. So I am very happy that uh, you are trained under Roy Chali and uh, Bhatt. Uh, uh, very nice. Very nice to know that. And uh, what is the what is the strong desire to quit all endo urology and then go to uro oncology? 
when did you develop this interest who motivated you are you had be from beginning or you thought that this is a new and let me explore this or you thought it is uh, innovative or more interesting what 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 made you to go actually the dorsal vein complex for my actually the the single point that uh, motivated me to what, reach what the you know that without bleeding no the thing is in way back in 2002 nobody was doing uh, radical prostatectomy regularly and everybody was worried about the dorsal vein complex and the bleeding so that was like a challenge and that interest uh, later to radical prostatectomy then uh, towards urology everything started from there so in- initially i during my mch i wanted to just do a proper radical prostatectomy open uh, uh, have you been like, to uk any time no no i have not been to uk not been to yeah UK. basically i just uh, got uh, 2003 4 i uh, went to dr sudhir raval then from there uh, after that uh, we started a small uh, the uro oncology unit in amrita then we developed uh, interaction with other faculty worldwide actually helped uh, amrita is how many bedded hospital now is 1000 uh, uh, plus 1200 i believe Very uh, big. Initially, yeah. Very big uh, car rate. Uh, which type of uh, robo you have now? X. Uh, we have uh, X I from big. initial. This was actually second or second uh, X I in the country. I think. Very nice. So, so initial from from day one you have X I. Yeah. So with this, uh, I will introduce you officially. I will share my screen. After that, I will hand over the program to you, and. Uh, uh happy that uh, good, good academician is giving a talk on the surgical technique and radical prostatectomy retroperitoneal laddenectomy today by dr p ginil kumar dr ginil kumar uh, he is a clinical professor of urology and renal transplantation at amrita institute of medical sciences kochi india areas of interest in uro oncology robotic surgery and retroperitoneoscopic surgery is national board examiner for urology since 2009 and mch examiner for urology in various universities invited faculty in various laparoscopic and robotic workshops at national level he also started the second euro oncology fellowship program in the country which got accredited by amrita uh, vishwa vaidyapeet university founder trustee and council member of robotic urology forum academy of euro oncology and also society of genital urinary oncology council member of for uh, south zone U- usi usi board of education member uh 63 publications in national international papers and over 200 citations uh, uh cl anand kumar best prize south zone usicon 2011 chennai bengaluru best video prize south zone usicon uh, 2012 hyderabad uh, very happy for that and uh, with this i hand over the program thank you ginil once again yeah i'll share my slide Just, yeah. uh, let me see is it visible okay yes, fine yes so uh, today i am going to discuss uh, retroperitoneoscopic adrenal lactomy as uh, chandramohan has uh, rightly told retroperitoneoscopic surgery is one surgery which is not practiced by many uh, mainly because of the initial uh, inertia of mind uh, that is very majority because everybody in this country is so skilled that uh, or if they are venturing on to it intraperitoneoscopic surgery is not a big issue at all but uh, because of the inertial issue so i thought that i will take up this as my topic because adrenal is one area which has got real advantage in retroperitoneoscopy especially right adrenal and this is one of the easiest surgery in retroperitoneoscopy so i thought that i will start with uh, retroperitoneoscopic adrenal ectomy even though retroperitoneoscopic surgery is uh possible for more complicated even for retroperitoneal scopic lymphadenectomy is possible for a recurrence of uh, post chemotherapy uh, lymph, uh, lymph node enlargement in testicular tumor so retroperitoneal scopy you, you may think that is uh, compared to transperitoneal scopy the transperitoneal scopic surgery is something like a football field and retroperitoneal scopy is something like playing a squash because of the congested, congested space but actually if you look at retroperitoneum is a vast space where there are a lot of important organs and especially our urological organs like adrenal kidney everything is there and the major vessels all the major nerves everything is going to retroperitoneum 
And it's unfortunate that we have to uh, access to the retroperitoneum transperitone leaf where bubble, which is a foreign uh, uh, structure for a urology is slide. So all the complications can be probably avoided if we can directly go to the retroperitoneum. And if we have to thank one person, that is actually an Indian, D.D. Gore, who initially tried to access to retroperitoneoscope uh, retroperitoneum and try to uh, uh, produce uh, or uh, try to, uh, in a, with this innovative technique, he tried to create the retroperitoneum space with his uh, glow finger technique, like uh, he inflated the glow finger inside the retroperitoneum and created the space. Uh, the Clem and Rasfeeler are the two important names in the international arena, but D.D. Gore is remembered for his enthusiastic, uh, you know, uh, uh, enthusiastic uh, 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 how he uh, started the retroperitoneoscopy without uh, much infrastructure in our country. So if you ask me what are the difference between retroperitoneoscopy and transperitoneal surgery, one, as you know, we, the space, if you are not properly dissecting is limited, but if you are properly dissecting, there is adequate space in the retroperitoneum. Anatomy, you may think that is complex, but it is uh, very straightforward. It is very predictable. And transperitoneal, since we have got space, we assume that is, we are, and since we are create, uh, doing regularly, we are more familiar. Instruments, we assume that we can have only a limited number of instruments. And we require complicated instruments like uh, a inflator, uh, uh, a uh, you know, balloon for creating the uh, retroperitoneum, then balloon tip cannula. All these things are actually not much important. It's not much required. Then technically, you assume that is difficult to learn. But for me, I think that is actually because of our mental inertia. Collision between the instruments, between the surgeons, and all these things are possible. But uh, I will say it's only the initial difficulty. But once you allow retroperitoneum, scope you will uh, really enjoy. Cost, balloon port are extra cost, but it is, uh, that is not required. So with this introduction, I'll go to the retroperitoneoscopic adrenalectomy. First is the port placement and creation of space. How I started retroperitoneoscopy, I usually put the camera port just below the 12th ray. And Positive port is at the renal angle. Anterior port is just lateral to the uh, lateral um, uh, lateral abdominal line, lateral to the rectus abdominis. I used to uh, select two spaces for if I wanted an extra port, three spaces actually. If you want, uh, earlier I used to go for the petit triangle, but uh, uh, later I shifted to just above the anterior superior rear spine. Another area where if you want you can have a retracted spot is just subcostal after dissection so these are the three spaces if you want you can create the extra uh, uh, port for uh, retraction or other instrument assistance so uh, so you keep the patient the lateral decubitus which is the commonest it is not that lateral decubitus is the only position through which we can approach the adrenals we can go for the posterior aspect also, but I am just first, I am describing the lateral decubitus position for adrenalectomy. So this is the port placement as I discussed. So this is a 5 mm working port in the posterior uh, renal angle, anteriorly the anterior uh, uh, lateral to the rectus abdominis, and inferiorly either posterior anterior to the anterior superior iliac spine, according to your convenience. If you want to have one more port, can have it to subcost it. So these are the different instruments which are used for retroperitoneoscopy. There's the different uh, balloons for inflation. And uh, these are the uh, balloon tipped uh, ports which are uh, used for uh, reducing the gas leak. But we never use all these instruments. Initially, we approach the retroperitoneum with a Rubber, red rubber catheter with a, a glow finger at the tip. We used to inflate with the uh, saline, the red rubber, and create the space. 
this is how it is done. Then they, uh, that is how we start the retrospectoscopy. And once we create, we put the port, then fix the cam, uh, cam uh, port properly and introduce the camera. Rest of the dissection is uh, done with the, the camera. But we can also uh, uh, create the space with a finger by dissecting and putting the port under uh, finger guidance. That is quite easy, but issue is the uh, the initial port can become larger because of your manipulation and air leak can be higher. So what we do uh, now is uh, a uh, VC port technique. We just uh, put an incision at the area where you want to put the uh, uh, port. Just uh, introduce the camera with the VC port and identify the plane. Uh, when it reaches the retroperitoneum. This is a simple technique. So I have a small video of uh, adrenalectomy. So these are the port placement as discussed already. So uh, this is the position. This is a sketch made by myself, so may not be that much good, but I feel that uh, you may be able to appreciate uh, the question. So again, I created this one. This is the landmarks. First, you have to climb on the swayat behind the kidney. You can identify the renal vessels jutting from the area. This is how the, uh, the space is created using the camera. You just uh, go underneath the uh, musculature and strip off the fat and identify the peritoneum. This is next landmark is the Gerota spatia. You can clearly identify the Gerota spatia merging with the psoas uh, spatia. So you cut it. Once you cut it, is the loose aerial arc issue, uh, issue on it. You can just uh, climb. You, you can see that there is not even a single blood vessel. It cannot have any bleeding. Just go along the psoas and uh, whenever there is a, there are small vessels, you just uh, coagulate. And there is a fascia separating. This is the renal artery, the next hand landmark. Once you uh, go above the renal artery, you can see if the adrenal is enlarged, it will be lying on the psoas. So there will be small adrenal, uh, the uh, sympathetic fibers and small vessels at this area, uh, just above the renal artery. Just fagulate and cut it. So next landmark is the IVC. Once you just enter this, uh, break this uh, uh, tissue and enter inside above the renal artery, you directly, you will be reaching the IVC. So you cut that tissue and you will be able to see the small pulsation of the IVC. Just strip it. That is the IVC and you can see the tip of it there. So just climb on the IVC. That is the next step. So just uh, take all the small fibers. You can see that uh, I'm not even using any energy sources because the bleeding is very minimal in this area. Then you climb on the, I usually earlier I use entirely the bipolar and scissors because bipolar advantage is uh, the fume is very less compared to the Lega shirt. But like I said, it's also fine or uh, harmonic is also fine. So you just strip off the adrenal from the, uh, the tissue. Next, once you strip from the IVC, lower aspect, sometimes at this junction can be slightly difficult if it is overhanging and going up to the renal hilar region. But in this case, it was very smooth. So you lift the adrenal from the IVC. So there is no other tissue other than the adrenal vein that is attached uh, with the IVC and the adrenal. So you just uh, and, uh, uh, go uh, uh, circumferentially and once you strip, you will gradually see the adrenal vein down. So uh, now next structure you will come across is the liver. So uh, one advantage of retropetronoscopy is in this tomb, this uh, adrenal mass, it was uh, retrohepatic well above and would have been very difficult to approach transplant only because was, you can see that there was a dimple 
of uh, liver into which it was jetting and the adrenal vein was difficult to handle if i was going transperitoneally but these problems are not there in retroperitoneoscopy so you can even go well above this point and uh, uh, easily tackle the adrenal vein even if it is close to or uh, uh, like uh, close to diaphragm level Very so beautiful. so you just uh, strip the uh, adrenal medially and you can see that uh, the adrenal vein is draining into the ivc so i am using only scissors and bipolar just to because this gives the best plane so bipolar you sometimes there will be small veins that is uh, connected to the ivc or cordate lobes but uh, it is very much uh, manageable so the upper border is uh, circumcise so one question majority asked is in pheochromocytoma should we tackle the vein first so the thing is in curiously we have more than uh, 100 pheochromocytomas in our credit but uh, uh, more than the tackling that is the manipulation of the adrenal that is important so uh if you are if, uh, uh, so most important two aspects is avoid manipulation second properly identify the vein and clip it properly so that complication can be avoided so if you have got a good anesthesiologist and good team the bp fluctuation is not a problem in the present day management so you have to be comfortable you just uh, this the proximal end is bleeding but uh, 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 the bleeding from uh, ivc side is more important uh, clip the double clip the adrenal vein and there are, sometimes there can be extra small vein with the alport scape applicator which is actually a metal uh uh scape applicator so occasionally i use uh, liga sure but uh, that is not very much needed so you can see that you are sharp onto the structure whether it is nephrectomy or uh, adrenalectomy you are straight plumb on the structure like in the kidney you are plumb on the artery adre you are plumb on the ivc and you can tackle the vein without much issue even if uh, the tumor is uh, very much uh, so next whether is possible uh through robotic surgery so if i if you ask me whether i prefer a robotic or laparotomy except for initial one or two cases all my adrenals i have done lap unless it is more than around 6 to 7 cm uh, i mean uh, majority of the case i may be if it is a very large i may go transparent only but thing is uh, nowadays we go more and more adrenal even if it is more than 6 we find that retroperitoneoscopy is uh, actually better my colleague dr sanjeevan just uh, almost entered he has entered the trans, uh, peritoneal cavity for the last 2 3 years i will say even donor everything is uh, trans uh, retroperitoneous so if you are if you have got uh, a system or a program in your department everybody improves because uh, this is not a big issue so robotically how we go the same part we use but there are some issues one we cannot uh, with the robotic part is only 8 mm for da vinci xi so what we used to do is we initially used the space creation uh, with a uh, with a urethral sound but i find that it was not very much thing uh, so later what i did is i just put a port like how we used to and we used to introduce the robotic port through the port so it is like a port in port technique so the robotic ports the uh, four ports are used this is the position which is uh, used uh, the one is for camera and the other two are for uh, uh, and one can be used for retraction but sometimes we, we don't use the other uh, the third part so if you ask me retroperitoneum has got the uh, adequate space there is adequate space for uh, having n number of ports so the robot is docked from the opposite side so this is how it is docked and uh, this is the position of the assistant and uh, 
can see the assistant uh, uh, port is either from the fittest triangle or from the uh, from the anterior aspect, just above the anterior superior. Yes. So it is a small clip of uh, robotic adrenaline. This is my first case just uh, initially in 2000. Otherwise, I regularly don't do a, a robotic adrenaline because I feel that we can easily do with laparoscopy. And for large tumor, probably robot uh, I may prefer. Uh, otherwise, for a simple less than six centimeter tumor is not uh, much uh, important. Uh, a robotic uh, adrenalectomy, one advantage is if the adrenal is dipping into the renal hilum, like this patient, the dissection above the upper pole of the kidney is easier. Initially, we were having some clashing, but adjusting the position, you can see the posterior port was clashing, but by adjusting the position, we could manage that later and uh, we could tackle that issue of uh, uh, port clash. So the uh, idea is same. Climb on the psoas. So this is the upper border of the kidney, uh, above the uh, above the renal artery. So you just go again. The idea is same. Just identify the IVC above the renal artery. So this is fairly large tumor, more than six centimeter, and the tumor was dipping into the renal hilum. That is why we prepared to go for a robotic. So. Uh, uh, this, the dissection between the uh, psoas and the uh, mass, then you climb on the adrenal. There will be small, small uh, blood vessel, usually three blood, blood vessel arteries may be there. And you just uh, coagulate and cut. Then once you uh, 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 so this was fairly large tumor dipping into the renal hilum. I used the other port to retract the kidney. So again, I'm climbing onto the IVC. If you ask me, you may think that laparoscopy is easier, but it's not. This was a difficult large mass going into the hilum. That is why it, you may feel that. And it was my fairly initial cases. So advantage about robotic is dexterity. You can go into di difficult angle and uh, dissection, coagulation, everything is better with the robot. Vision is better. But uh, issue is initially you should be very cautious about the clash of instruments and uh, you know and that is one difficult initial piece, but later we could manage that. So here a robot has got some advantage. Actually to dissect uh, in the uh, dissecting the lower border between the kidney and the adrenal in large mass, uh, actually robot is useful. One issue with the uh, retropetroscopy is uh, the movement with the uh, uh, with respiration. So, so uh, the anesthesia or this sometimes uh, when we sometimes ask them to reduce the vital capacity and increase the frequency just to keep the saturation properly. So the movement can be uh, less rigorous. We can see that the tumor is going into the hilar region. The dissection, uh, uh, once you dissect the hilum and identify the uh, uh, IVC above the hilum, then everything becomes easy. So, so once you separate out, then actually everything becomes easy. You just climb on the IVC, just uh, clip the adrenal vein, as I discussed in the laparoscope. We use a robotic uh, clip applicator for adrenal because uh, in difficult areas to give the chance to assistant because laparoscopy, we are clipping ourselves. Uh, unless you are very confident with the assistant, uh, it is better always to use the robotic clip applicator in adrenal because once you have it, it's very difficult to manage the adrenal vein. So 
so it was a large adrenal uh, more than 6 cm manage uh, with robot so uh, next the dissection goes beneath the liver uh, sometimes you may uh, end up entering into the peritoneal cavity but you can manage by just uh, putting a very needle into the peritoneal cavity uh, 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 peritoneal cavity and we could circumvent the problem so if you have any air going into peritoneal cavity then sometimes the peritoneum may balloon up and the space may be reduced so the adrenal was uh, back and uh, removed out so so another approach we have we are uh, we used to do regularly is the posterior approach so posterior approach only limited videos are available about this approach myself and uh, my colleague dr sanjeev and regularly use so advantage about this approach is if you have a bilateral adrenal ectomy you in one sitting without reposition you can go from posterior aspect this particular patient uh, we did adrenal ectomy from posterior aspect because this was a post liver transplant patient and there was uh, in the left side our uh, uh, dilated veins all around the adrenal from the anterior aspect and we felt that even in the lateral aspect because of the uh, large veins in that area we felt that posterior aspect may be a better option this was a post liver uh, liver transplant patient with uh, uh residual dilated veins because of the previous part of hypertension and uh, they suspected a uh, hepatocellular carcinoma recurrence in the adrenal but uh, issue was it was the solitary metastasis and they advised uh, whether we can have a adrenalectomy so this is the approach this is actually i'll just introduce this is uh, the port placement is like this uh, posteriorly one uh, middle for uh, port is used to introduce the camera this is again port in port one is one uh, port just lateral to the uh, paraspinous muscle and anteriorly and the mid axial line the other port and uh, 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 one assisting port we introduce in the petit triangle so first landmark is the diaphragm just strip out the all fat from the diaphragm and uh, go down you will raise the uh, raise the adrenal so once we create the space the robot was introduced and uh, this is from the posterior aspect in the prone position there are some blood vessels that is going into that area that we usually see in the uh, transpeptoral surgery also this is the diaphragm that is reflected from posterior aspect this was fairly large more than 6 cm lesion so once you go underneath there is nothing else just fat and diaphragm alone then you identify the kidney this is the kidney just dissect above the kidney above the kidney and strip of the adrenal this was a large adrenal recurrent so once you dissect those things medially you will get the adrenal veins which is clipped so in this uh, the word yeah this is actually the vein the other one was uh, just a tissue probably uh uh symbiotic uh, success uh, success uh, going into the adrenal so once you uh, advantage is you are not seeing any structure just i am seeing only the adrenal upper border of kidney no other structure in the field you cannot have any other complication because you are not touching any other structure just from the adrenal first up plum we are removing that adrenal. that is advantage issue with this posterior approach is the clash because uh you may strike the buttex from the when you are manipulating so uh, you have to have some flexion in the uh, in the supine position 
So these are the three approaches for adrenal through retroperitoneum or extraperitoneum. So what I want to highlight is the retroperitoneum is uh, a spacious structure. Advantage about uh, retroperitoneoscopic adrenalectomy are one, we are not going to the bowel. All the complications related to bowel, unless you are entering, there is it doesn't exist. No paralytic ileus, no uh, uh, bowel injury. The patient will be walking uh, home next day, whatever be the surgery, even if it is extensive RTL and D, you can discharge the patient on next day. Uh, the chance of bleeding, even if it happens, is confined to own, uh, if it is a very small venous, well, it automatically when it, uh, uh, the peritoneum seals for the posterior aspect, automatically it becomes a closed space and the, the minimal bleeding uh, doesn't continue. So, and paralytic ileus is almost free. These are the advantages. Thank you very much, Chandra Mohan, for giving me this opportunity. Excellent. Thank Excellent you. Excellent video. With your permission, I will stop sharing. And uh, I'll ask questions relevant to the, because I do laparoscopically, I do not much experience in retropetronoscopy. See, if I uh, understand, the uh, first camera port is below the 12th rib tip and second port is at the renal angle uh, yeah. which, the, the another one is anterior which one will be your uh, dominant hand port below one or above one so dominant hand will be uh, like one is camera dominant hand will be right side that is anterior aspect usually okay, okay. and uh, in the left side it will be in the posterior aspect Great. That's exactly I wanted to ask you. Answered it. Yeah. Uh, so in the left side it will be opposite. So we have to yeah. think opposite. So do you think that yeah. left side is easy? Right side. Left side looks difficult than right side because right. Actually, side, we have uh, done uh, nephrectomy in the post liver transplant. The left side in a adrenal. Actually, I go for uh, 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 retro in the right and trans in the left adrenal. Yes. But yes. kidney. I prefer even a complicated kidney. I go for, uh, uh, I can go for either lap or uh, retro or transplantal. But adrenal also, we have done uh, left side. But uh, left adrenal is very easy, transplant only. So that is why I just uh, don't go retro. Otherwise, uh, so your, opinion equally, is that, uh, your opinion is that left adrenalectomy is more. Easy when easier, you drop the, the when you drop trans, your screen trans and this thing and directly you can reach and uh, there is yeah. no there is, because yeah, of but, adrenal, uh, adrenal vein drains into the renal vein it is easy. Renal what is vein, it? yeah. But once you do a lot of uh, left, now I feel that it is not very much different because uh, uh, because uh, you can just see the stump and uh, easily come out. But thing is, uh, I am more used to left side uh, trans peritoneal. But my colleague. That's everything retro, even left. Very good. So, so my second question is, if you wanted to lift the uh, kidney uh, while doing the suprahilar region, above, just upper pole of the kidney when it is falling, wh where should be the additional port? Is that is in the right side I uh, to uh, discuss. So usually the uh, in uh, earlier we used to uh, uh, basically, the most important thing is proper creation of the space. If you have got proper space, usually no retraction is required because the pneuma will do the job. Uh, if for proper retraction of this space, do you need to change the balloon in two, three directions and again inflate or one inflation? I never, I never use any balloon. I just no, no. Uh, rule. Then whatever, in, whatever uh, inflation, yeah. you, you so, have to change the direction and do or one time is enough. No, I just dissect with the camera. Okay. Just dissect with the camera, put the port, dissect with the other port, just dissect with the instruments. So, how we do. section, uh, lower part is how much? Till on this OS, how much you have to go? In the adrenal, I usually don't dissect below the renal vein, renal artery. Yeah. But in the kidney, uh, uh, we go so just go all the way down. All the way down, we can go. Even uh, uh, we can reach up to the bladder. We drop it only if you just change the angle. If, if, if anything is required more anterior to kidney, uh, what is your tip and trick to move the peritoneum towards the medial side so that you can 
so actually actually i am doing a retroperitoneal if not dissection we go up to the opposite side from right side we dissect across iota ivc and reach up to the opposite uh, ureter great so this is so, lifting entire peritoneum clearly off the lifting entire the peritoneum clearly and we can uh, we, i have got day after tomorrow a tumor which is actually a kidney or renal tumor recurrence in the retro pancreatic lymph node behind the ivc so this area we had earlier we had such a uh, recurrence which we managed uh, uh, across the uh, across in the supine aspect so in those cases we make the patient a little more supine rather than the vertically uh, uh, you know in the in the kidney position okay so in case uh, uh, like you wanted to lift you will be close to peritoneum and lose areolar tissue you keep on lifting yeah and then going as much as possible with your camera and instrument yeah. that's yeah. what you want you mean to say yeah yeah so uh, what is the commonest uh, initial uh, like everybody ask me rirs what are the first 10 problems like that what are the commonest uh, initial problems you face if you remember your past days uh, okay if the mentor is there probably you can avoid that uh, if the mentor is not there what are the common mistakes we do in retroperitoneoscopy so entering into retroperitoneum is the catch so how you can enter in the proper without injuring the peritoneal cavity so position why we are going just below the uh, uh, 12th rib is in that area entering into peritoneal cavity is chance is very low because we are going into the perinephric fat okay so uh, we may not injure the even if we overshoot a little we may not uh, go and injure the peritoneal cavity so that is why that area is very important so second thing is sometimes if you uh, i used to put the incision enter up to the uh, the the, uh, uh, the facial planes are uh, uh, dissected and lumbodosal fascia is incised and enter into the peritoneal cavity uh, into the retroperitoneal cavity so sometimes we think that uh, in the after two layers of muscle we have entered and we may make a plane there and we may not be able to enter that is one issue that used to happen earlier so you should reach the fat plane then only you should create the space otherwise you will unnecessarily create lot of bleeding and sometimes you may not be able to proceed so that is one issue that can happen and lot second of, after that ha ah, yes yes lot of people say that, that if you dissect with your finger uh, it unnecessarily ah. leaks and the port becomes loose so that is uh, very easy to manage in the retrum because if you are not cutting muscle the problem comes when you are cutting muscle the splitting of muscles in all the three layers of muscle if you split in its angle even if you create a space it snaps yeah so yes. it will not leak like rubber so just to put a, yeah just to put a uh, suture it will not leak whatever be the size of the incision if you are not cutting muscle usually it will not leak yes yes so if uh, if the most important structure after entering uh, is the psoas for anybody yeah uh, so the psoas is the most important first landmark so second landmark i will say is just uh, trace the anterior abdominal wall and reach up to the peritoneal reflection that so is once you do visible, that is easily visible yeah is easily visible so if you identify these two landmarks then there is nothing to go wrong okay so if uh, if for example if you need to you have already shown it i am asking because in verbal if you listen it will catch uh, you, you see there are three ports vertical on line one is anterior then one is below the rib another is at the renal angle and i am just doubt that if you come para renal angle para spinal region down can we put port and retract entire thing i mean uh, the leg towards the leg end in continuation of the line from the costal uh, uh, the renal angle can we put on the psoas any so, port uh, so i usually use three areas one is the petit petit triangle okay so that area is very useful because uh, you can just lift any structure from there 
if you have any uh, structure that has to be lifted uh, superiorly then subcostal is one area like if you want to retract uh, you know adrenal from the kidney and all but i never use nowadays earlier i used that uh, pot uh, uh, useful most useful i will say is 2 cm to 2 finger between around 1 to 2 finger bread above the anterior superior spine because from that it is easy to put the uh, the hemolog clips onto the ivc uh, uh, on the adrenal so uh, there won't be much clash so that that is the best area where you can put the ulcer pot yeah and uh, the the gas which i have seen in live conferences some amount of struggling uh, because of the instrument uh, cautery gas uh, the it causes vision disturbance and it takes lot of time to rectify unlike in peritoneum peritoneum is a large surface usually how much co2 it will require to inflate like in 9 liters uh, approximately will be used in uh, uh, tra- transperitoneal approach before you can put the port and after that you maintain that here i don't think uh, that amount of co2 is required it may not be required but uh, uh, yeah the space is slightly less yeah so w- you you feel that uh, monopolar uh, have you used hook any time yeah earlier i used to hook because uh, uh, because the cautery Uh, the the amount of smoke is less yeah the, uh, with the uh, uh, so then i use started using bipolar and uh, scissors uh, uh, do, do, uh, then, do you have uh, thunder do you have thunder beat also no we don't have thunder beat here we have Among what, all uh, the I guess, both in laparoscopy and retroperitoneoscopy what 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 uh, coagulating or cutting instrument you you personally like you personally like uh i usually use more of liga sure nowadays uh because uh, of, which company uh, you can you have can you mention the company which company you are using um uh, no this is actually uh, 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 uh this one usual liga sure that is uh, mm, okay so mm, you entire surgery you use liga sure yeah majority uh, we use only yeah but uh, harmonic the present day harmonic which has come there is uh, the 1000 prop yeah metronic uh, metronic is the thing that is uh, created in the lego sure harmonic uh, by johnson there's uh, latest uh, the uh, this one you know the ceiling device is also quite good it is actually but, sharp uh, compared yeah. to all these things i like sharp yeah slightly sharp but ceiling is quite good dissection is better this section is better but uh, comparing to everything yeah everything i like to have uh, uh, bipolar and uh, scissors that is my favorite instruments in the uh, the body. instrument it you have shown like a small cup it is very good it is a very very fine instrument and yeah, so. it should firmly mm. the first video is of excellent uh, quality yeah. laparoscopic yeah. Yeah. so usually usually we use uh, scissors and majority whenever there is a ceiling is required then only we usually use liga sure because all is liga sure harmonic everything the issue is uh, the fogging because okay. of uh, fumes what about uh, the yeah. have you ever tried pyloplasty whatever said and done many people say that pyloplasty uh, in uh, uh, pyloplasty in uh, 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 retroperitoneoscopy people feel not necessary people feel not so because the water will leak and it should be keep on sucking a uh, lot of people say that uh, transperitoneal is better so i have never uh, did a pyeloplasty uh, uh, actually i have never done pyeloplasty laparoscopic pyeloplasty for the last so many years my colleague but this uh, uh, retroperitoneoscopic pyeloplasty and he approaches uh, literally everything through retroperitoneoscopy dr sanjeev so i know from him that uh, is very much feasible Uh, uh but the leaking is not a big issue uh, only thing is when there is a bleeding that is the issue or uh, you may be but the problem with the retroperitoneoscopic pyeloplasty what i feel personally is the angle the angle of uh, 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 in which you are viewing the uh, uh, hilum is different from lateral so yeah. transparent only it is from the medial aspect that is the main difference rather than the leak is it uh, is it 0 degree or 30 degree you are using all these surgeries uh zero uh, but in the rpl and the 
arthroscopic uh, uh, you know uh, 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 lymph node dissection uh, robotically i use 30 degree i just balloon up the uh, uh, the peritoneal cavity completely and there is enough space for 30 because i have to look uh, from downwards in between the intraorto cavity and all so i use uh, 30 degree there okay so in a in a case of a, a, a renal tumor i am going little off the upper polar tumor okay. uh, the uh, what are the what is the warm ischemia time you are comment in retroperitoneoscopic partial nephrotomy uh, there is no difference there is no difference uh, a transparent or retroperitoneoscopy there is not uh, no difference for uh, 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 is is equally uh, yeah basically that depends on the space and uh, when four ports are uh, put inside usually it doesn't have much uh, uh, initially one or two cases I felt that the clashing is more but later uh, it was quite uh, almost similar do you think that body habitus of the patient obesity or thin patient uh, can we easily where, where do you feel retroperitoneoscopy is easy or bar difficult uh obese patient i feel retroperitoneoscopy is uh, slightly easier because uh, uh, we used to you uh, some of the adrenals we used to do is uh, very obese like uh, more than 100 kg and all uh, due to cushings but in that also retroperitoneoscopically because the bowel will not fall much into the field that is one advantage but access can sometimes can be tricky and even small vessels bleeding also can obscure the uh, vision maybe fat total yeah, amount that the initially fat. happens initially it is in the initial period the, these are the uh, but meticulous dissection can avoid that problem yeah so uh, normally you don't require to suture uh, 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 rectus at all in any point uh, uh, usually you, you open the connecting both the incision both the ports retroperitoneally uh for uh, removing the specimen you mean yes yes so removing the specimen usually we just uh, put a small majority of the adrenals you have to just uh, uh, enlarge the camera port because already we are uh, splitting the muscles so just uh, put another port for vision uh, to the camera to the other port put the back through this one and uh, retrieve that is what we do for adrenals but if it's a large like Uh, renal and all we just uh, go for the like some lateral extent of the gibsons we can use for uh, uh, removing the uh, lateral aspect of gibsons and be used for uh, uh, removing the specimen acha a couple of last questions uh, no- normally uh, the if you if you uh, by chance it's a theoretical question but it can happen with anybody if adrenal vein is torn or renal vein is yeah. torn technically what happens in laparoscopy you can put one po we can put one instrument which can just close the ostium of the vein into the ivc and then still lot of people manage with a suture one uh, uh, the uh, with a proline suture they manage but uh, what do you think have you ever faced uh, torrential bleeding in retroperitoneoscopy any a form of surgery i mean to ask so in the rpl and the post chemotherapy uh, we had to repair uh, lumbar veins we had to repair lumbar arteries we had to repair bleeding uh, uh, right side lumbar vein from the left side so all these things are possible sorry left side lumbar veins from the right side across so all these things we could uh, do adrenal vein you have never experienced bleeding Uh, adrenal vein we are always extra cautious so extra cautious. For, yeah, because we because that is why in even in pho we actually find that uh, going circumferentially and getting the adrenal at the last vein is safer uh, better than just jumping on to adrenal vein initially and increasing the chance of bleeding so yeah. for me actually that is more dangerous than the bp fluctuations which can be easily managed by the anesthesia doctors at uh, with the present uh, techniques and medicines so if, i feel that bleeding is more risky if ivc is not seen then di- if adrenal is seen directly you can go and uh, slowly cut all the areas loose areola tissue and then then reach slowly the ivc border or you have to see the ivc and then start so 
always we i feel that structured dissection is very important you just go one by one so first is the renal artery identify then go above that identify the ivc then dissect over that then go to the adrenal vein so even if i see everything i just follow this very good so with that we conclude the session i must thank first video of course robotic videos will be also good first video was extraordinary quality and very slow meticulous dissection in fact if uh, if you if you if you introduce your colleague uh, we will uh, try to see the other surgery any suturing surgery from him i will take the number from him and you have done extraordinary yeah. job this is the first time face to face interaction of a surgical technique i am seeing it it looks very good obvious that you are a very good surgeon technically excellent i must appreciate thank you for the compliment i really appreciate that thank you very much for sparing bye time bye. and lot of people appreciated uh, thank you for in fact they wanted to see unedited videos palani narayan said so that we can go more if possible record one and put uh, with